My name is Philip Harrelson. I'd like to welcome you back again to the Barnabas Study. And I'm using some of these videos here to uh, kind of honor uh, a great man of God, Brother John Harrell, uh, who pastored the church in Bridge City uh, for a little over four decades. And uh, he's recently just passed away. And uh, just sending some of my musings and thoughts over the uh, years, I um, thought I would spend some time on my uh, YouTube channel talking <clears throat> to you about some of the things that Brother Harold impacted we, me about. Um, I met him, uh, it was in September of 03, and uh, then we actually took a trip with Cal. So we actually met him at a funeral. Uh, Sister Raggio, Dixie Raggio, Brother Ken Raggio's wife, passed away. And so Brother Raggio had asked me to take part in the funeral. Of course, Brother Harold did the main part of the funeral and it was there that I got connected with Brother Harold uh, although I'd been listening to his tapes for several years prior to that but had never met him and then in December uh, Brother Raggio and I, he, we, Brother Raggio was in Birmingham, I'm in Dothan, that's about three hours uh, southeast of, of Birmingham and so we went out to Bridge City in December of 2003 and uh, spent a weekend out there with uh, Brother Harold. During that period of time, I was still working full time uh, at the hospital. And um, I uh, worked uh, primarily um, most of the uh, time. At that time, I was working in a cath lab. And uh, so we had time where that when we were on call, you had to stay at the hospital. So I had a back carry backpack to uh, to the hospital, and you know would put books and that sort of thing into it. I had been uh, had knew about and was aware of uh, the Pilgrim's Progress. Uh, in fact, I had a copy of that uh, Hendrickson Christian Classics uh, Pilgrim's Progress. This is the copy that I had uh, that had set on my shelf for probably. I don't know, 10 years or more. I'd never really, I bought it uh, basically because it was uh, on sale at Christian Book Distributors and I uh, had never read it. And so uh, when I got out there, Brother Harold asked me if I had ever read Pilgrim's Progress and I told him that I had not uh, because when you, you look at, at the copy that I had, um, it, it was a lot of, uh, it, I mean, it more looks like more like it's an interview and uh, just kind of you judge a book by some of the pages that were there. And so I, I thought, well, maybe I need to try to labor through it and work at it and so forth. And, of course, that was back in the days whenever uh, you still had brick-and-mortar bookstores. And we had a Lifeway here in Dothan. We also had a family Christian bookstore uh, here in Dothan. So I, I went in one day after I had um, gotten off of work, and I went in and I saw this uh, copy of uh, Pilgrim's Progress. This is the classic uh, John Bunyan Modern English. Uh, it's, it's published by Bridge Logos. And I bought this copy. And this copy was the one that got sort of stuffed in my backpack. And I would take it to work with me. And uh, when the day ended, if I was on call and had to stay at the hospital, I would pull this book out. And whenever I read this book, I thought to myself, can't believe that I have never read this book before. That's how good uh, that Pilgrim's Progress was. In the passing of those uh, 19 years now, I can't tell you, I probably read it through again probably maybe three times or so, and then multiple times I have gone back and I have looked at um, some of the scenes that that are in that book. And um, I looked at Brother Harold's sermon titles. I've got a little a little uh, pamphlet. It is in horrible condition. Uh, Sister Paula sent it to me. Uh, she gave it to me probably in 2005 or six. And um, it was a, it was not in the greatest shape when she gave it to me. I guess she had maybe found it. And she gave that to me. And so I started looking through all those titles uh, that starts out, I think, is in 1979 and went all the way up to maybe uh, 90 
798, somewhere in that neighborhood. And just by looking at that, um, at Brother Harold's sermon titles, I, I've, I've somewhat, and I'm, I'm, de- I'm doing guesswork because I have not been able to hear the sermons itself, but I would speculate that probably somewhere around 30 sermons or so that Brother Harold preached over the years. Now, obviously, he made reference to uh, a number of those uh, sermons or illustrations that he would use whenever he was uh, <coughs> whenever he was was preaching. Um, the one I guess that stands out <laughs> the most to me, and if you can get your hands on it, uh, you need you you owe it to yourself to try to find the one. Uh, called a loaf of bread and a flagon of wine. And it's about whenever, uh, after Christian has descended down into the valley of humiliation and gets into this ferocious battle uh, with Apollyon. And uh, he comes out literally like almost the life has been beat out of him. And he manages to reach over and some of the things that he had collected in, in a little backpack of sorts uh, was a loaf of bread and a flagon of wine uh, that he had gotten out of basically the picture of the church and, um, and had, had used that to kind of revive him. And of course, it's a picture of the memory of what Paul was talking about in 1 Corinthians 11 where that he talks about uh, whenever we take part in communion that we remember uh, what the Lord did for us at, at Calvary in the work of the cross and so forth. And, and but Brother Harold had a masterful way uh, to uh, preach that. There's another sermon that I heard about, but I, I, have, I have not been able to find anybody uh, that I could borrow that tape because I, it's on tape because it's been so long ago. But he preached about a sermon called The Most Dangerous Place in the World. And um, it talks about, from what I can gather, and again, I'm, I'm going by what two or three people have told me about, uh, that where that Christian goes to sleep, uh, there in, uh, as he's climbing up the hill of difficulty, he gets into a place where that uh, he just kind of feels like he just kind of wants to zone out. So he takes a nap. Uh, during that time, and Brother Harold preached a message about that being one of the most dangerous places uh, for you to get into, that you get to a, a point in your walk, and I'm assuming that it's dealing with apathy, and uh, that you find yourself in a place where uh, that really, um, you know, you, you don't know to go forward, you don't know to go backward, you're just kind of asleep at the wheel. Uh, in that, and he talked about how that that's an incredibly dangerous place uh, for you to be at. And and again, uh, these were were uh, just scenes and snapshots out of uh, Brother Harold. He told me one time, and I read this about Charles Spurgeon. Uh, Spurgeon read Pilgrim's Progress more than a hundred times. And uh, if you have the Metropolitan Tabernacle pulpit. Um, you can, um, and that was, and I'll talk about that in another video. Uh, but you can look through where that that Spurgeon uh, spends time. Where that there were a number of times in sermons that he would make some observation about uh, Pilgrim's Progress, and uh, and those were, were parts where that Brother Harold really kind of keyed in on. And uh, he, he, again, he did a masterful job with that. And I, uh, over the years, I have, because of that, I have, I've got multiple copies. I'm not going to show you all of them, but I guess I'm a sucker for, for Pilgrim's Progress because when I go into bookstores, uh, I will snag copies of it. And uh, this one is the Oxford World Classic. Uh, this is a uh, picture of... Uh, are on the front of Bunyan. And I'll tell you what I did uh, with this picture. There's a, a young lady in our church. Her name is Sarah Butler. 
And uh, you may not have been able to see, probably hadn't been able, but over here I've got a sketch copy or sketch of uh, William Tyndale. And then right over here I got another sketch of Spurgeon. And then downstairs uh, in my lower, the lower area where my study is at, I've got, she did another one of uh, John Bunyan. And she did this. She, 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 and she did an excellent job with it. And so everywhere I'm around, Tyndale's watching me over here, Spurgeon's watching me here, and then down downstairs Bunyan is is watching me and I think that may bring some honesty I'm gonna see if I've got a picture of Brother Harold I'm gonna ask Sarah I'm, Sarah uh, this is a challenge for you see if you can sketch me out a copy of Brother Harold and I'm um, thinking about maybe seeing if she can do that for me it takes her several months to do it uh, but see if she can maybe do that but anyways this is the copy of the Oxford World Classic uh, this one is from the Banner of Truth uh, this is one that just uh, has been recently published within the last, I'd say, five years or so. Uh, this one right here is one that I run across, and this one is probably, this is more uh, than 100 years old. It's in a, I've got it in a plastic, um, uh, a plastic sleeve, and uh, I've got all my Pilgrim's Progress as they sit up there with uh, John Bunyan's. Uh, the rest of his his works, but again, I, I can't tell you how how beneficial it was that Brother Harold turned me on uh, to the books about uh, Pilgrim's Progress. Or turned me on to Pilgrim's Progress. There was another book. This one is written by Cheryl Ford. It's called the Pilgrim Pilgrim's Progress Devotional uh, by Cheryl Ford. Uh, I, I picked this up and I bought Brother Harold a copy of it and uh, sent it to him one year and, and just gave it to him for Christmas. And, and again, it's divided up 365 days. Uh, I've got multiple pages in here, dog-eared and underlined. And um, I, I have even here in Dothan, I uh, have taken snapshots out of Pilgrim's Progress and I have developed sermons. Uh, and preached about them. One of the sermons that, that Brother Harold kind of inspired me about was whenever uh, Christian gets into the um, dungeon and uh, he's there with giant despair and uh, gets into that battle. And I did end up preaching a message here. Uh, one of the, the, the parts that I uh, really resonated with me uh, was the fact about how that whenever Christian is starting, just kind of starting his journey, uh, that he starts up in the way and uh, he gets there and he's on, it's, it's about dusk, and he's approaching what Bunyan, uh, the palace beautiful, which Bunyan kind of paints up as a picture of the church. And so, so Christian is walking along there. And uh, he's very fearful, afraid. And uh, he hears the porter, the pastor, calling out to him. And uh, so he starts up the path. Well, when he starts up the path on either side, of the um, of the path, and that's reflected here in this in this Oxford World uh, Classics here down at the bottom. There's a picture of a line. That line, uh, they were on each side of the path. What Christian didn't know is it, that they were chained. Now the chains that they were chained up by, they could only reach a certain path or a certain distance because the path was was sort of protected there, and. Um, he uh, he talks about how that that the porter opened up the door. Now this is at night, and he opens the door up, and the beam of light that's coming out of the church uh, sort of transverses or intersects with the path. And the porter calls out to Christian and tells him, he says, "If you will walk in the light, uh, your your passage is going to be safe, and you're going to be okay." And when I read that and just meditating, thinking about it, I had to ask myself this question. How many times in Bridge City, Texas, did Brother Harold stand up there on that platform at that pulpit and to tell hundreds of people, if you will walk in the light, you will be okay? Because here's the outcome of the story, is that Christian walks up through there and whenever he gets to the lines, they can't get to him because they're chained. But it's only because he walks in 
the path of the light, righteousness, holiness, salvation. Brother Harold opened the door to that. I think John Ett and Daryl told me yesterday uh, that Brother Harold had preached somewhere around 4,000 sermons. And so somewhere in the neighborhood of 4,000, and I know I, I'm sure he probably taught Sunday school classes and various Bible studies that they did not have uh, records of. But how many times did Brother Harold open the door up and let the light shine through so that there were saints of God that could find their way into an altar, into the presence of the Lord, uh, into a good place because Brother Harold was a faithful porter. Uh, a faithful pastor uh, was a man that was able to be able to help them to see the will and the purpose of God. So uh, again, my exposure to Pilgrim's Progress, uh, I, I, pro I doubt that I would have spent the time and energy and effort uh, that I have with Pilgrim's Progress outside of of what Brother Harold has told me about. And if you're not a reader, I, I get it. I, I get it. I, I'm sorry for you that, that, you're, that you're not a reader. But if, you, uh, if you're not a reader, then you owe it to yourself to go to revelationmedia.com. And uh, there's an animated <coughs> version of Pilgrim's Progress that uh, Keith and Kristen Getty uh, have put together. I have watched that thing multiple times. Uh, since it came out, and it is a profound. Again, it's animated, but they do an excellent job uh, working with the story of Pilgrim's Progress. But it was Brother Harold uh, that opened up that pathway to me uh, so that I would be able to invest time and effort uh, into finding out uh, what, what Pilgrim's Progress was all about. So again, Brother Harold, I salute you. I, I thank the Lord for um, what he did to use you to influence me uh, in the manner of just opening up Pilgrim's Progress. And, and uh, I've got another book up there that's written by a man by the name of Barry uh, Horner. Give me just a second here. Um, and Barry uh, Horner uh, wrote a book called Pilgrim's themes or Pilgrim's progress themes and issues, and uh, if you're a preacher, you need this book because it talks about a lot of very and again I, I just in pursuing uh, the Bible and Pilgrim's progress, the gospel in Pilgrim's progress, sanctification in the Pilgrim's progress, uh, the despairing reprobate in the iron cage. That's a very provoking uh, story. Here's another copy of the Pilgrim's Progress that I have, and um, it is uh, illustrated, or it's, uh, my daughter-in-law gave this to me. She took a trip to, uh, uh, to London last year, and she bought me a copy uh, of that. And so I have uh, really uh, used that, or no, I hadn't say use that. I've, I've got it up in my uh, collection with that. And uh, this one is, is one by that Crossway uh, put out here several years ago. And uh, you say, why in the world do you uh, collect books like that? Well, I guess the uh, same reason guys collect rifles and guns and pocket knives and, and boats and golf clubs. Uh, so I'll I'll leave you. Thank you, Brother Harold. Um, thank you, Bridge City, for creating the preacher that you did by pulling things out of Brother Harold to help him uh, to be able to help so many during his his ministry and calling. Well, until next time, thanks for stopping by, and uh, the Lord bless you.